Hi, this is Chris with Magoosh, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the AWA, the Analytical Writing Assessment on the GRE, and specifically how the AWA writing is scored. So how is it scored? What's going on? What should we be paying attention to? These are the big things that I wanna to address today. So first and foremost, it's not all about getting the perfect six. The score is based on a zero to six, and many people fixate on this perfect six. They want long paragraphs in which these examples clearly and carefully in a nuanced fashion discuss what the well-written thesis talks about. And of course, peppered in there are sophisticated words and complex sentence constructions and even a touch of stylistic flair. Whoa, I want that. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, you don't need a six. Rumor has it that PhD literature programs don't even require a six. Now, if you get below a five, that's a red flag, but just get a five or above and things are fine. For most of us, or at least for most applicants, it's about getting a four. Four is that magic number. Get a four and above, it's fine. Got below a four, suddenly, uh-oh, hmm. Let's put a little flag next to that app. We don't want that to happen. And so we wanna to focus today on exactly what do we need to do to get on a four and what can we do to avoid sliding down to a three. Now, I'm going to throw some percents at you that are very interesting. So, if you get a six, then what percentile are you at? Well, six is the highest thing. So, if you get something like five, top five percentile, top three percentile, that's great. It's pretty close to what it is. It's around one, two percent. So, very hard to get. Again, not important. You get it, yay, woohoo, but it doesn't really mean that much. Now, let's slide all the way down to a three. What percent of people get a three? Well, it sounds like it's sort of in the middle of a zero and six, you know, that's kind of the middle. <laughs> so 50%, that would be my you know, gut answer. The reality is very interesting though. It's like 12% or 10%, it's really low. It's like, what, how did it jump all the way down there? And so then the next question is, well, what about a four? It's somewhere between the 10 to 12% and 99, top 99 percentile, but where is it exactly? And the four is what's right around 50%. And that's why you wanna get there. You wanna say, hey, I can write as good as half or more of the GRE student population. And that's what most programs care about. So why, what's, what, what accounts for this big drop, drop off between a three and a four? Well, from my experience, the three essays are those essays that don't really have a, that much clear of a point. You're supposed to answer a question, the issue, at least as one of the GRE writing tasks, and the three essays don't really clearly answer that. And that clear answer, of course, is that thesis statement at the beginning, and they don't really have a clear thesis. It's not sure what they're, they're not sure what they're gonna argue. And then they set out in the paragraphs and they maybe restate what they put in the thesis, and then they just kind of go off. <laughs> and then they kind of ramble, they don't have focus. And they might do that for a paragraph or two, and then they just kind of wrap it up, and that's the end. Uh, that said, there are also essays in which the student might struggle to express themselves in writing. And this oftentimes happens if English is not your first language. And so this can be a little bit more difficult and to improve on, and it can be a reason why people get a three. Uh, so I don't want to say it's always because you veer off the topic. In, in reality, the GRE also cares about writing mechanics, you know, how you express yourself, and clarity around that. And so. So if you've struggled all your life with writing and expression, whether or not English is your first language, then that might be something to work on. But I've seen people who don't necessarily struggle with those things and get that three. And that's the thing. You want to focus on the organization of the essay, focus on writing a clear thesis and sticking to that thesis. And finally, using concrete examples. Don't just try to support your point by just coughing up some vague generalization, which by the way is fine for a topic sentence, but then just repeating it and never really giving a concrete example uh, from history or from society, um, and then elaborating on that example and showing how it supports your thesis. If you do that, and if your writing is generally okay and it doesn't isn't marred with plenty of errors, then you're able to get that four and you're above that 50% ranking. And that's really how the AWA score, because that's what we wanna focus on. Uh, to, to get a little bit more into the weeds, though, you can always check out what's called the rubric on the ETS site. This is the official GRE site where they'll talk about what really goes into a four essay, what goes into a three essay versus a six essay. And you can look at all those things. 
Um, somewhat helpful, but ultimately you'll also want to look at some sample essays that have a three or a four or a five and see what they do differently. But I think the big takeaway from this video is look at what the program is requiring that you're getting into. And in most cases, it'll be a four and above. And then figure out how do you get that four? How do you get above that 50 percentile mark? And then you'll be golden and you don't have to waste any of that precious other precious study time you have uh, fixating or worrying about the AWA.